The building on the cover of the 1923 Edmunds Cookery Book, under the splendid slogan, Sure to Rise, is home. It's written on the roof. Mm. And at the base of that gently smoking chimney, I'm sure there's a coal range. And inside the range, a batch of light and tender scones, or maybe a lofty sponge cake. The secret of their success, baking powder. In 1879, Thomas and Jane Edmonds set up their baking powder business in Christchurch. Thomas was 21. He sold the baking powder door to door, assuring the housewife that with his product, her baking was sure to rise. If he met resistance to a sale, he would leave a tin to be tried and then turn a, return a week later for payment. The Edmonds Company grew very swiftly. In the 19th century, scores of brands of baking powder competed for market share. My favourite, Tarawera, sold after the 1886 eruption, promised, promised to blow up your scones. But Edmonds carried all before it. By 1923, it was already world famous in New Zealand. The 1923 scone recipes have Edmonds baking powder in bold, the vital ingredient. Those circular recipes were inside the tops of tins. Edmonds sent a free copy of the cookery book to every couple whose engagement appeared in a local newspaper ensuring that their book and their product were in more and more New Zealand kitchens. And this is what the fuss was all about. Scones. They're quick breads, just flour, baking powder, a little butter and milk. They should be mixed and baked very quickly in a very hot oven or on a griddle on top of the stove. Then you break them open, never use a knife, top with butter and jam, maybe even some whipped cream, and eat them while they're still warm. By the 1935 edition, the cosy looking home has vanished from the cover, replaced by a smartly modern sunrise motif. Always an innovator, Thomas Edmonds had moved the business to a brand new factory on Ferry Road. It embodied the latest principles of manufacturing, hygiene and efficiency, spacious and very well lit. Mm. And here it is, the centrefold. The architects were J.S. and M.J. Guthrie, who also designed Los Angeles on Fendleton Road. Thomas Edmonds espoused the ideals of the English Garden City movement, that buildings and factories should enhance their landscapes. The colourful flower beds and velvet lawns were designed and maintained by Edmonds' head gardener, Rupert Overend. Photos taken inside the factory showed the jelly crystals and custard powder departments, the product testing laboratory, the can making department, the engineering workshop. And here is the baking powder filling and labelling department. Two and a half million tonnes tins annually. In New Zealand, in 1935, New Zealand had one and a half million people. In 1952, the factory and gardens remained on the centrefold, but now a very pretty Enid Blytonish drawing of the model factory and garden, with a dinky little model truck coming down the road. The glass house at the side contains Thomas Edmonds' collection of tropical plants. They were open to the public. Five years later, the wonderful factory with its confident slogan and its beautiful gardens has made it onto the cover of the book and it remains there to this day. The cookery book in the building have come to represent New Zealand industry, New Zealand reliability, and a fail-safe guarantee of well-risen scones and sponges. By 1976, the book has expanded many more pages and recipes, metric and imperial measurements, a spiral binding so that it will lie flat on the kitchen bench. And there are lots of color photographs inside now. On the cover, the iconic building reigns supreme. But in 1986, there is trouble ahead. Now reduced to a rather clumsy drawing of a facade, in 1990, the building will be demolished amid loud, amidst loud local protests. Sure to rise no more. The building is gone, but the book marches on. And what about the scones and the sponges? Are they still sure to rise? Sponges were once the stars of the afternoon tea table. This 1923 sponges English style, jam but no whipped cream yet still a tender and towering triumph. After 1957, scones remain popular, but sponges are struggling. They are no longer illustrated. I love sponges and I want to see them rise again. So over the next 60 seconds, I will tell you all how to make a superb sponge. Have the oven at 190 degrees centigrade and butter one rectangular tin or two round ones. Break three room temperature eggs, eggs into a large bowl. Whisk with an electric beater for 10 minutes, time it. Gradually spoon in 100 grams of sugar as you whisk. Remove the beater and sift flour, corn flour and baking powder onto the fluffy mixture. Gently fold them through with a metal spoon and then fold in a little melted butter. This makes the sponge more tender. Scoop into the tins and drop each one hard on the bench to force out any large air bubbles. Bake for 15 to 20 minutes. 
pulled on a rack and then fill with jam and lots of whipped cream. Cut the rectangular sponge into halves to do this. Sift some icing sugar on the top and that's it. A couple of personal digressions. In the baby boom years of the 1950s, children's party food arrived in the Edmunds book. This delectable spread is from the 1952 Enid Blyton edition. I remember it well. I wanted to make all these fanciful and enchanting frivolities. They probably tasted awful, but they looked so pretty. In the new edition, I asked for a wraparound cover illustration with some of that 1923 charm. And in this way, the now legendary building lives on in New Zealand kitchens. The gardens in Christchurch still exist, tended by faithful volunteers. It was a pleasure to work on this national cookery book, since it embodies a long and honourable tradition of New Zealand home baking. Sure to rise.